Happy Dolly Sunday School. Let me see if this will ring instead of swirl around. <laughs> How are you all doing today? I hope you're doing well. I have Simon and Shiloh today. I just realized they both start with an S name. Simon and Shiloh. Simon was my latest reborn box opening. And he is painted by um, One Sleeping Angel. And he is the Raphael by Severine Purit. And then Shiloh is the Ellie Sue by Bonnie Brown. And she was painted and rooted by me. So it's cute to see them together. See one that I painted and one someone else painted next to each other. To see the differences and um, the different techniques and stuff that was used, I think. I think that is so fun. Anyway, they're going to join me today while we do Dolly Sunday School. Yeah. And so we're going to jump right in. Let's jump in to the Bible Illustrated for Little Children by Ella K. Linville. Remember, this is a watered down version of some Bible stories for little ears. So be sure to get out your big Bibles today and be listening. Remember, we had a pointer yesterday. See, um, not yesterday. The last Dolly Sunday School, we had a pointer, remember? And we had a pointer with us. Does anyone remember who our pointer was? Well, today we're on this page, and it looks like we've got people walking. Look at the parade. What are Joseph's brothers doing now? They brought Benjamin to Joseph, and Joseph told them he is their brother. Now they are going home to get their father, Jacob, and the rest of their family. All Joseph's family will come to live with him in Egypt, for Joseph is not angry with his brothers. He will say, don't worry. Yes, you meant to be bad to me, but God really sent me here to keep my people alive. So the question is, who said, go get my father and all of, all of you may live here with me in Egypt? Joseph did. And who said, yes, you meant to be bad to me, but God sent me here to save the lives of many people? Joseph. And who really sent Joseph to the land of Egypt? God. And why? Because he is going to save many lives. So that's really cool. And you can read this in Genesis, in your big Bibles now, Genesis 45, chapter 45 of Genesis, verses 4 through 11. That's what it says here. So yes, he did not stay angry and he forgived uh, you know forgiveness is hard sometimes but there's a lot of beauty that can come with forgiveness because it weighs you down i've always heard i'm sure you guys have heard too unforgiveness is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die Forgiving someone doesn't mean that you excuse them for what they have done to you. It doesn't make what they did right. It doesn't mean you're just a pushover or a doormat. It means that you're saying, I forgive you so that I can heal and move on. So you're no longer a prisoner to the things that they had done to you. And that's hard, especially trauma, child childhood trauma it is hard ladies it is hard I had to work on it for many years but when you come to that place of forgiveness and realize it's for yourself not so much the other person and then eventually in time you will realize that you can you know they were people too you know they did bad things but um yeah forgiveness I don't know who needs to hear this because I'm just talking. Oh, and look what I forgot. Look what we have. What do we have here? What do we have, Simon? We have our book marker. So I better quickly mark our page because, you know me, I'm going to come into the book and forget where I'm going. I'm going to come to the book and not know where I'm at. I've already lost my page. <laughs> so, yes. There. We marked it. Oh, wait. We're ready for the next page. The next page, things are going to get fun. So I'm excited. 
um, we're kind of studying a little bit about, we studied a little bit because we did, uh, we're reading, my husband and I are studying Exodus. Is anyone still doing the Bible challenge that I gave? I don't know if anyone's following along with me, but the Bible challenge, um, that I put out for y'all is to read a chapter a day. So read one chapter of your Bible each day. And we're doing it in the evenings, right before bed. I read to my husband. He loves it. He always loved being read to growing up. And so he really loves it. And I really love to read out loud. And uh, so we're doing a chapter night. And we're in Exodus. And it is really nice. I've enjoyed it up until the point where they're talking about curtains. <laughs> like there's like three chapters or so just talking about um building like the uh temple and the tabernacle and all that and they're just talking about curtain measurements and stuff that's where i'm struggling a little bit <laughs> but it's interesting to hear what what it could have looked like to help you envision anyway but devotions from the front porch we're almost look how close we are to being done with this book See, we're right here. Okay. I wonder what today is going to be, what, what it's going to have for us. So last Sunday we did front porch sitting. Let's see what this Sunday is. Oh, there's a break in the book. So it's just a really pretty picture of a porch. That looks nice. They even got, I thought that was such a um, rich thing when I was a child it's funny when you're a child what you think are oh that's a rich person thing uh ceiling fans on the front porch <laughs> I thought that that was just that was just you had to be you had to be of wealth to have a ceiling fan on your porch <laughs> so the page that we are turning to is sweet potato casserole and oh my don't that look delicious with the brown sugar and the marshmallows and it looks like pecans Ugh, looks delicious sweet potato casserole and look i got two little sweet potatoes here oh so cute all right so the bible verse is john 14 6 Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. We need to hear that again. John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Yep. Um, you don't come through the Father because you did good works or you were a good person or uh, you were a bad person. You don't go... I mean, you don't go by how many times you pray or because you fasted or didn't fast. You only get to the Father. You only get to heaven through Jesus. That's it, folks. That's why it's grace. That's why it's a gift. There is nothing you can do to get yourself there. It's Jesus. The acceptance of Jesus. And that acceptance of him will make you want to live a righteous, good life. You're not going to, it's not going to be perfect. It's still going to be hard, but oh, is it sweeter with him? Okay. Let's get into our devotion. Cause I'm, I'm rambling now. I'm getting off on my preaching now. <laughs> there are two schools of thought when it comes to making sweet potato casserole, the crunchy pecan and brown sugar topping or the gooey marshmallow topping. You might think it doesn't really matter, but you'd be wrong. People in the South take their sweet potato casserole very seriously. But we can all agree on one thing. One doesn't make sweet potato casserole with yams from a can. <laughs> Miss Sue is the oldest lady in a little church in South Alabama. She has a lot to say about a lot of things. And one of those things is sweet potato casserole. There's only one way to make it, according to Miss Sue. And it involves work. The sweet potatoes must be chosen carefully, peeled, cooked, and mashed. There are no shortcuts or cans involved. Why? Miss Sue would ask. Do people think there's an easier way? Isn't that the way with so many things? We want an easier way. We want the reward without the work. Many individuals claim to have found God in their own way. The problem is that there is no other way except Jesus. 
no spiritual enlightenment or good living is enough. We cannot take shortcuts. The only way to God is in the footsteps of Jesus, the way of the cross. It is the way a way of sacrifice. The path is narrow and few will choose it. In the words of Miss Sue, you can do it another way, but in the end, what you end up with is not sweet potato casserole. So and the prayer is, Lord, I know that the life we are called to live is one of sacrifice. To be Christ, to be like Christ, is to serve and to suffer. Give me the strength to live the servant's life. And that is our devotion today. And we're moving on to our hymn. Are you guys ready? Oh, this is Simon's first Dolly Sunday School. Yeah. And you've had many, huh? You're well seasoned, Missy. I would like to know who's watching with you. Do you hold a baby when you watch Dolly Sunday School? I'd love to know. Okay. We are going to sing... The Old Rugged Cross. It's been a minute, I think, since we've seen it. Sung it. And it's one that we all know. Most of you. So, uh, let's sing it together. And there's a Bible verse at the beginning. It's Philippians 2, 8. And it says, He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Even death on a cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and i love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so i'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it. To dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross. And exchange it someday for a crown. In the old rugged cross, stained with blood, so divine, such a wonderful beauty I see. For twas on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me some day to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. 
I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. All right, I sang the whole song this time. <laughs> so, I'm sure you've had enough of that. Did you sing along with me? I'd love to know. Well, that's the end of Dolly Sunday School. But if you have any prayer requests, please comment down below. I'd love to pray for you. If you have any praises, any good news or answered prayers that you would love to share, um, we'd love to praise with you too. God is good in many ways, and it's good to remember the good things as well as the prayers that need to be prayed. So if you have a uh, praise, please comment that below. If you have an unspoken prayer request, maybe you don't know what to pray. Or there's someone in need of prayer that you know of that, and you don't know all the details. Or maybe you just don't want everyone in your business, but you want some prayers. Put a little bunny in the comment section. You can either put the bunny emoji or just type out the word bunny, okay? And we'll know that you have an unspoken prayer request. If you have nothing to add into the comment section, just top, pop down below and say hello. And come back throughout the week to see who we could be praying for down in the comment section. We come about like a Wednesday, Thursday, and see who in Dolly Sunday School is asking for prayer. So we can all join together and provide prayers. Um... Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I know my videos are taking forever to upload. So even though I'm uploading um, in the middle of the day, it takes forever. Maybe by night or by early morning do you see it. So I don't know what's up with that. Hopefully it uploads quickly. Hopefully I'm wrong and it will upload soon. But I hope you enjoyed seeing Simon and Shiloh. And we will talk to you all later. God bless you. Bye-bye now.